Hi. This week will be all about protein. Now, protein happens to be very popular these days, with many people following high-protein diets. But what is dietary protein really? Now, by watching our carefully designed animations, you'll get introduced into the chemistry of protein. You will learn that dietary protein is basically a collection of 20 different amino acids. Now, as I pointed out already, protein-rich foods are on the rise, and there is a strong interest in high-protein products across the foods and drinks market. And in this week, you'll learn more about which foods are good sources of protein and which foods aren't. Now, as was true for the other macronutrients, it's important to know how dietary protein is digested and how it's taken up into the body. And you will study animations that show what happens to dietary protein in our GI tract. And you will also learn what we actually need protein for. Now, protein is often considered as a building block, but what does that mean? Now, by watching more animations, you'll get acquainted with the concept of nitrogen balance, or protein balance. And that's basically the balance between, on the one hand, the protein entering the body via our diet, and on the other hand, the protein leaving the body after being degraded in the urine. Now, you will also read about protein quality and dietary protein recommendations. How much protein do we need? And does it matter what type of protein we ingest? And in general, we know that protein from animal sources has a better quality than protein from plant sources, such as wheat or beans. And you will also become familiar with the term limiting amino acid. Now, many people follow high-protein diets, and many claims have been made about these diets and the benefits of following such diets. Uh, bodybuilders, for instance, they have a habit of eating a large amount of protein with the aim to increase their strength and the size of their muscles. But how do these claims hold against careful scientific scrutiny? In fact, most of them don't. Now, in a video, I will explain that currently none of the evidence linking dietary protein to a certain outcome could be classified as convincing. Now, that doesn't mean that high-protein diets don't do anything. It's just that the scientific backing for these practices is currently lacking. So you're facing a very interesting week dedicated entirely to protein. And at the end, you'll be tested by a section exam. Have a good week.